stop, stop, this doesn't make sense. Hold up, wait, who are you? I am you. I am me. No, sir, you are you. So, gang, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name, of course, is the one and only Karabo Sitole. And if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, what are you waiting for, honey? What are you waiting for, Chief? Go on, do the right thing, click that subscribe button, make sure you like my videos, make sure you comment, right? If you have any questions, just comment and I'll get back to you. So in today's video, we're just going to we are just going to be doing um tips, right? Slash secrets for the exam, right? Test two specifically for students who are studying stats, right? So if you are studying stats, you know what I mean. So, okay, let's get right into it. So, says two tips. So, test two is doable. It's nothing deep, I think. So, the first thing that I want you to know, obviously, we have two topics that we cover, time series, as well as probability right so the first thing that i want you to know is how to calculate okay what to know you need to know how to calculate the initial trend So you need to know how to calculate the initial trend. So I'll, I'll write the things that you need to know as we go, right? But I just want to summarize what I mean by know the initial trend. When I say know the initial trend, I mean know how to calculate your CMAV and your MAV, right? So you calculate the CMAV if your P, P is even right so the hint to this is them telling you that um the data is done quarterly right for example um they tell you that the sales were recorded on a quarterly basis so quarterly means p is equal to four four is an even number right if they tell you that the sales were recorded monthly your p is 12 so it's still even so whenever your p is even you always calculate what we call a cmav Okay, so how do you get to the CMAV? You first calculate your MAV1, MAV2, then you divide by 2. But we'll get to how we do that, right? So your MAV is calculated if your P is odd, right? So how do we calculate your how do you calculate your CMAV? Okay, so to be able to know that. Consider this artistic table right here, right? So it's talking about the cost of electricity, right? So whenever you want to calculate your MAV or CMAV, this is what you do. You go to where, to the CMAV that they are asking you to calculate. For example, in this instant, our CMAV is our A. Remember I said, when do you calculate, in, in, I mean, when do you calculate CMAV? When you want to know the initial trend, right? Trend. So I want you to go to the CM to the CMAV they want you to calculate. It's here. Count one, two upwards, right? Make a line on your Y values. Okay, and then go back to the A, two steps downward, right? And then join it. Two steps downward. So those are the values that I'm going to work with, right? So I have all those values. So there is a formula that Mr. Farai. Dr. Farai has shown us of a shortened way of calculating your CMAV. And this is the formula, CMAV. I'm just going to use this example, right? It's just, it's math, actually, if you think about it. So with my method, you would do this, right? You'd make a small triangle on the first four values, skip the first one, and then go to the next one, make another circle right so if you check in these values which ones are intersecting 
this one, this one, and this one, right? So they are repeating in this triangle as well as in this, yeah, shape. So meaning that, okay, wait, another thing, which ones are not repeating? 4,5 and 4.7, meaning that the last values will not repeat, the middle ones will repeat. So you are going to add the ones that do not repeat, right? So for example, in this case, we have 4,5 plus 4,7, then remember that what is inside, what is intersecting is repeating in this triangle as well as in this shape. So 4,3, 3,3 and 2,9 is repeating in this small shape, right? It's here. These are repeating. So what I want you to do is to times them by 2. So it's going to be 2 times their sum. 4,3 plus 3,3 plus 2,9. Two comma nine, right? And then what do you do? You divide by eight. So that is going to be the general rule that you are going to use to calculate your CMAV. Make your big triangle. Take the first. Okay, remember, identify where this the CMAV that they, that they want you to calculate is, right? And then count two steps upward, two steps downward. Make a big triangle. The, add the first and the last value right and then the middles are going to be times by two so you're going to say two times their sum divided by eight right so to save time this is the formula i i would advise that you guys use right so your cmav in this instance would be 4.2 plus 4.7 plus 2 times 4.3 plus 3.3 plus 2.9 Right over eight, so it's going to be three comma three comma seven seven five. So yep, that is the value of my CMAV. So this is the simplest way to calculate your CMAV. But then, how do we calculate our MAV? You always calculate your MAV if it is odd, right? So your MAV would be the sum of all the three numbers divided by three. So it would be the sum of three numbers divided by three. That's how you'd calculate your MAV if the number is odd, right? Good. So if you know how to do that, you are fine. Okay, so the second thing that I want you guys to understand is the reason why, okay, so remember the steps of decomposition. Find the initial trend, detrend. Find the initial, I mean, estimate the season and then deseasonalize. But when you're estimating the season, this is the table that I want you to know how to draw. So the first, the second thing that I want you to know is drawing the table to help you find your corrected season right so the table that i want you to know is this table so let us use the same example as the one that we have here right so remember you would have your initial trend your next trend which is your detrended data data right so what I want you to do is to list this data into the table that I'm about to show you, right? So, okay, something that I need. Don't mind what's written here, right? So you, you'll find a ruler, right? And then you'll do this. You'll find, you'll look at the detrended data. Do you see that starting at the third quarter, there's nothing above it. Third quarter, fourth quarter, first quarter, second quarter. So you're going to write it in that in that way right so it's gonna be so this is how the table will look you need four things right two one two three four totals okay so you're gonna need one no not one but three remember how they are written you look at the quarters three four one two so three Four, one, two, right? 
okay and then what i want you to do is to write all the seasonalized data if you see to save time you will just follow how it how the data goes so you will say 0 0.6625 so 0 0.6625 the next one is going to be the next value so it's going to be negative 0 0.425 the next value is going to be negative 0 0.7875 go on and go on and go on right so after you have done that let me pause and do it because it's something i want you guys to understand okay i've written the data right so you write the data as i said you should then you look at your question so this is when you're trying to answer the question of what is the adjusted seasonal index for any quarter given right so you write the detrended data as i said and then you look at your question is it asking you for the medians it is is it asking you to use the method of the medians or the method of the means if they are asking for the method of the medians a median is always the same thing the middle number right so you go to each quarter and you find the middle number of each quarter then you write it down if they asked you to use the method of the means it means that you will add all the data all those numbers in the third quarter and divide by one two three four by how many they are do the same here do the same here do the same here and then you will have your values then you will add these values and get a total. If your total is not equal to zero, you need to make it zero. How do I make this zero? By add, by subtracting 0, 0,1, right? But I need to subtract 0, 0,1 from each term. So I'm going to say negative 0 0.1 divided by 4. So I'm going to subtract 0, 0,025 in each term, right? And after I've done that, Remember, I'm going to subtract negative, so it's going to be minus 0, 0,025, minus 0, 0,025, minus 0, 0,025. And then all this is giving me minus 0, 0,1. And how much is it equaling to? Zero. And then you'll find each corrected season. So there's quite an interesting thing that we learned in our tutorial today. And Mr. I mean, Dr. Farai was talking about why when I add these values, do they give me when I correct them, why do they? Why should they give me a zero? So why should I fix this to a zero? So the reason for that is explained, right? So he used an example of ice creams in ice cream sales in winter and ice cream sales in summer. So because you have less sales in winter, that means your sales might even be negative, right? And then whereas in winter they will start to like pick up, right? So um, the fluctuations are going to actually be eliminated. Okay, but I have a better way of explaining it, right? I'd like to think, not just with an example, but using our stats knowledge, right? So you remember an amplitude, you remember the concept of an amplitude, right? So an amplitude is your vertical distance between your trough and your peak. So let's just say you have a data, you have, you have a graph like this, right? So if you can see in this graph, you have a constant Okay, you just need to draw in the endpoints, right? So you have a constant amplitude. It's not increasing, okay? I'd like to believe it's not. I don't want it to be increasing. Forgive my drawing skills. But as you can see, the vertical distance between my trough and my peak is not that much. It is like constant. When I move from here to here, here to here, here to here, there's not that much difference, right? So what I'm trying to get at is that if you have a constant, if you have a constant amplitude, it means that white noise is being removed, right? So you are looking at the vertical distance between the peak and the trough. So when your sales were at the highest and when your sales were at the lowest. And if we are saying that your amplitude is constant, that means that any white noise is going to be eliminated because you are looking at the vertical distance between your peak and your trough, which will be the same as the vertical distance from this peak to this, from this to this. So if you had a negative one here, one here, negative one here, one here, negative one here, one here, it will cancel up. Even if you had a negative 0, 0,5, you have a 0, 0,5, negative 0, 0,5, 0, 0,5. Because it's a constant amplitude, it's going to cancel out at the end of the day. What is cancelling out? The seasonality is cancelling out, right, to give you a zero. So I hope you guys understand what I mean, right? So it's just something to understand 
in that part, right? Okay, let's go on to the next thing that I want you guys to understand. So you'll draw this table and it will help you find your corrected season. So when you take this and you subtract this, the answer that you get is actually your corrected season. Okay, so I talked about the, met of the methods that you need to use, the method of the means, method of the medians, right? Okay, um, what else do I guys need to... What else do you guys need to know in time series is that when you forecast a value, value, when you use Brown's method, the forecast of n plus 1, so the forecast of any y say that is outside our n. So if our n is 14, if they are asking you to forecast um, the sales for time period 15, it will always be equal to a n the last value of your forecasted sale why is that it is because remember when you are doing when you are using brown's method you are smoothing the previous you are smoothing the previous values right and then you are also smoothing the current values in order to predict for the future so remember with brown's method what's the formula our a n is equal to our a y t plus one minus a times a t minus one so this component here where you need to multiply the y t of where you are at right it means that i need a sale if i'm calculating a3 then i need a sale for y3 but if you are calculating or you are focusing a sale outside your time period that means you're not going to have a sale right so how can you like use the browns method you're not going to be able to hence we make the conclusion that you will always take the last value of your an for your fn plus one right okay and then for seasonality i mean for decomposition so for decomposition you can predict outside of that right using your formula so y is equal to a plus n minus table bx right whatever the formula is that you're given normally you're given the formula if you're not given the formula you're going to use your de-seasonalized data to find the formula look at my other videos especially the ones on regression on how to use the calculator to find your regression formula right so you will use the regression formula however you will also need to add your seasonal component and another thing that i want you guys to remember in the exam is that the seasonal component for each quarter is going to be the same, right? It doesn't matter the time period that you are at. If they say what you pre you're forecasting for the fourth period, so your seasonal component is going to be the same for every fourth quarter, for, the, for every time period that is at the fourth quarter. So it's going to be whatever the answer this was. Let's see. Going 48. Going, let's just say this was negative 0, 0,5, right? So this is your seasonality for every value that falls under t4 that falls under q4 so even if let's see q4 out falls under time period four in this instance falls under time period eight then it falls under time period 12 so it doesn't matter where it is if it's the fourth quarter it's going to have the same seasonal component regardless of the time period it is at so that's something you guys need to remember right so I'm going to end this video right here because I think those are the things that you need to remember, things that most students struggle with when they are doing um, time series. And I'm going to do the second video on the things that you need to remember for test two when you are actually doing probability, right? Where we are looking at how to answer questions, where we're looking at when to use a contingency table, when to use the uh, tree diagram, and when to use notation, right? To help you answer the question. You're going to look at things like the difference between partitioning and overlaps, right? And then we go on and look at how to calculate how to predict your maximum and your minimum when you are given partial data. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button. See you guys in the next video. Bye.